Hey, hey guys, how's it going? It's Baggins here, and today we're going to talk about leveling builds in New World. It's been quite some time since we made a video like this. In fact, it was the release of New World, but today, as with this video coming out, there is fresh start servers, and with that, you're going to have to make a level 1 character again. You cannot transfer to the fresh start servers. You have to start fresh, effectively. Now, with leveling in New World, there are two sort of criteria that I like to meet in order to have uh, like the perfect leveling build. The first one is movement speed. We have this with the hatchet. Um, we get uh, when we pop berserk, we get the increased movement speed. So you can see we're running around like at this speed and then we pop berserk and we're gonna run 20% faster while it's active. There's quite a few other weapons that do give you this sort of movement speed bonuses as well. And there's also movement abilities. And the reason why we find these useful is for running from A to B. So if we have a quest that's all the way over there and we need to go hand it in or we need to go kill something over there and then come back and hand it in, Although the questing experience is like much better. It's not just like walking simulated now, but there is still going to be some sort of traversal of the environment and having the extra movement speed for that seems to be very useful or it doesn't seem to be. It is very useful. The second thing we look for in a leveling build is the ability to heal. This means we don't have to pop as many potions or we don't have to slow down to wait for our health to regenerate so we can go back into the fight. So if the build has any healing or like self-healing lifesteal, that is also a huge plus. So movement speed and healing or like sustain that's what we want in our leveling builds. And with that in mind, I've got two weapon combinations today that we're gonna show you. And the first one we have here is the Hatchet Life Staff. This is like, for me, a build that's as old as time with New World. It's the, the first build that I leveled up with and I still think it works great uh, even to this day. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, showcase like how this build works and then we'll run you guys through the mastery um, any perks that you might want to pick up if you can and also your attributes So yeah, let's just go ahead and show it an exam like an example of how it works here now Obviously, I'm level 60. So it's not like a super fair example. These guys are only level 42. So um, They're not gonna be that much of a threat to me But we can do something similar on level if I had a character that was around uh, these guys level So we just go ahead and attack like as many enemies as we want with the uh, life staff here um, Like so and let's like grab one more dude over here and we're going to pop down the sacred ground, pop down the beacon, all by myself, and then we're going to switch, pop berserk, and just like cleave all of these guys down. And that's basically it. You can see we're taking quite a bit of damage, but we're also healing for a lot at the same time. So we're not really under any threat of dying. And the hatchet, just in case we are actually in threat of dying, the hatchet has a really, really great passive um, just down at the bottom of the skill tree here called Defy Death. And it means you literally can't die. Uh, if you if you were to die, instead uh, you get reduced to 50 health and you become immortal for three seconds. So yeah, really, really strong and it can allow you to pull off some crazy stuff like that. So let's jump into the mastery and talk about what makes it work. First off, we're going to start with the life staff. Um, as you were leveling up with this build, the first thing you want to go ahead and do for your first like few levels is to max out your sacred ground because this is just like the healing ability. It increases all your other healing by 50%, which includes any lifesteal you have from the hatchet, um, and then all of your other heals that we're going to grab here as well. So yeah, first things first, we're taking this. We don't need to bother about these, because these are more for like healing um, allies, and again, we're, we're focused just on a solo leveling build here. So after this, we would go ahead and pick up two other heals. We're going to grab Orb of Protection, then we're going to grab Beacon. Um, in order for Orb of Protection to actually be able to heal ourselves, we do have to fully max it out, so we would go Orb, Beacon, and then back over to Orb to finish it off, and then back over to Beacon to finish it off. Um, and then, you you know, at this point, we're sort of getting into the mastery levels where it takes a bit longer. But honestly, this is the core of the build here. So this is what you can work with it um, from and, and where you can really start like popping off and doing the combo that we saw there. From this point onwards, we will just look to take some of the passives that increase our healing. So if you have a buff, heal for 20% more. After you dodge, he heals 20% stronger. Try and pull that one off before you drop your sacred ground. Dodge to uh, make it 20% stronger. And the same with your other heals as well before you switch over and stand in them. And then the other passives that we want to take uh, extra incoming healing. Uh, I guess reducing the cooldown of abilities, but none of these like particularly matter that much. In fact, we'd probably go ahead and take uh, a glowing focus here and potentially even balance like really this last point. There's nothing that like gives you a huge advantage. I'm going to go and put it in protect as touch. So this is what the finished skill tree would look like. Um, but once again, we're going to absolve down to sacred ground, grabbing orb, um, grabbing beacon, then finishing orb, finishing beacon, and then just taking like any passives that look good to you guys, to be honest. From the hatchet skill tree, we just want to max out berserk. Like the first levels that we get, we want to go all in on berserk because this uninterruptible berserk ability here is so, so good. While berserk is active, you're, um, you're uninterruptible. You can't be staggered. So what's normally going to happen? I'll just showcase it here if we go grab a bunch of guys. Okay, so we got a good mix of people now. Let's drop the heals down just to make sure we don't actually die here. 
Um, and then we switch over to the hatchet. You can see I'm like kind of like getting shoved back and, and knocked and my character's, um, I don't know, it, it just becomes kind of annoying. But if we pop Berserk, um, you're going to see we're like not getting shoved back anymore. We're just standing in one spot. And that's going to be really nice for us because um, if we're going to get shoved back, we will get knocked out of our sacred ground. And if we're not inside sacred ground, that is a pretty big, uh, that's a big oof there because we lose our extra 50% incoming healing and all the other benefits from sacred ground. So yeah, having the Berserk, making it so that you can't be like knocked back, you basically just hold your ground is a huge deal. So that is why we go straight into that before ignoring like any other ability or any other passive. After this though, I think you probably do want to go ahead and pick up a Raging Torrent here and we'll also get some movement speed. Again, we've mentioned that movement speed is really good. And then I don't think this final upgrade is worth it. You could take it if you want, but I'm just going to pick up some passives here that sort of increase my damage until we unlock Defy Death. And then this really is the build here. This is the point where like everything is working well. And from here, we could just look to take um, Rending Throw for a little bit more single target damage. We could take uh, Aim Throw if you want to do some thrown hatchets here. Rejuvenating Crits is a nice one. Every time we uh, crit a light attack, we get stamina back so we can dodge roll around a little bit if we find ourselves in a tougher fight. And ultimately, I think our skill tree is going to end up looking something a little bit like this. But really, the core of it is to get Berserk maxed out, grab Raging Torrent, and then defy death as soon as you can after that. Picking up a, you know, rending throw for the single target damage I think is a good play and some of the passives that are just going to make your life a bit easier over here as well. Now attributes for this build you guys are probably going to find a little bit confusing. We are mainly just going to go for focus because if we don't have enough points in focus uh, we're not going to be able to do any healing. The life staff basically just becomes a dead weapon. It does very little damage. It does very little healing. You might think well Baggins what about the, the hatchet though? It's a, it's a strength dexterity weapon and uh, we don't have any points in strength or dexterity so it's not going to do any damage but that is not the case we have these magical gems over here so if i just go ahead and put my hatchet back on um, and we'll put the life staff on as well we have gems in the game now these are obviously the max tier gems and as you're leveling up you're probably not going to have access to one of these but a cut flawed amber will do just fine and honestly in quite a few ways is better than what we have here so you just want to take this around like level 20 to 25 you're going to find hatchets and, and weapons that have these gem slots in them you want to take your cut flawed amber and just slap it into the hatchet like that some people say, like Baggins, I'm not able to uh, put the gem into the hatchet, what's going on. Like right now, I don't have the option to put this gem into the hatchet. That's because the hatchet already has an elemental effect on it. So Shirking Abyss, or it could be Chain Abyss, or it could be Abyssal Empowerment. But anything that is like a, an element basically negates your ability to put an Amber Gem in it. So unless it was Shirking Nature or Chain Nature, we could not put a nature gem into it. So bear that in mind when you're looking at hatchets, if you're thinking about buying one off another player, if it has chain fire, chain ice, or it has shirking ice, shirking uh, fire, shirking uh, abyss and stuff like that, then you're not gonna be able to do the amber gem. But effectively what this does is converts part of the weapon's damage to scale off of focus. And it actually scales very aggressively off of focus if you have a tier two gem. Uh, the, the full explanation as to this is too much for the video, but I'll put a link in the description down below if you guys wanna learn a bit more about how the gem scaling works. But yeah, slapping a tier 2 gem, uh, a cut flawed amber into your hatchet and then going for points into focus. I think what we're going to be looking to do is probably like three points into focus. Um, one, two, three, and then one into constitution, one, two, three, one into constitution, one, two, three, and just sort of take this as you level up in the game. So three points to focus, one to constitution, three points to focus, one to constitution. Once you find yourself at 150 focus, I think you can stop the, uh, the, the focus points because this is like pretty good honestly that, that your heals are going to start popping here because you get the 20% healing output you want to make sure that you're at least 50 constitution by this point as well ideally and then if you do want to you can spice up your damage a little bit more by taking 50 points into strength to get the extra damage to melee and physical basic attacks from here on out it's kind of your choice but you are running out of points anyway you're going to get obviously points from your armor my character is currently naked but in general prioritize focus then constitution and finally strength once you uh, have hit these sort of milestones down here so the next build that i want to showcase that works uh, i think very well for leveling up but it is very different from the life staff and hatchet is bow and rapier now this build like I say, it is different from Life Staff Hatchet. You can't really just sort of stand there and take looks of damage unless you have a specific perk. And I wasn't actually able to find it. I opened like tons of boxes of gear and all of my weapons and I couldn't get a single perk because PTR sucks. But it's called Leeching Flurry. So this is a look at the perk here on New World Database. It says each hit of flurry restores 47% of the damage's health. And that's if you have it on your uh, rapier. And obviously we're going to be at a bit lower gear score here. Let's go down to like 300. 36% of your damage's health. If you have it on your armor, it's uh, quite a bit 
bit weaker. So you do want to look to get this on your rapier. If you see a leeching flurry rapier going by while you're leveling up, pick that up. Um, there are a few quest rewards that you can get with this on as well. You can see here's some rapiers down here. If we sort by gear score and go lowest, um, rapier of the dark swashbuckler is something we can pick up at level five. Um, and this drops from apparently Boatswain Ambrose, which I think is the pirate in Everfall, if I'm not mistaken, right? Or is this Windsward? It's First Light. Well, you know, we just throw some names out there. We'll get it. Anyway, uh, we're, we're diverting from uh, like the explanation of the build here. So this accelerates more in the movement category. So we said for a build to be good for leveling up, you either need to have lots of movement or lots of lifesteal or ideally both of them. While this certainly like achieves the movement thing very well, um, evade shot gives us a little movement speed boost here. So when we pop that, we get five seconds of increased movement speed. Um, if we pop evade, uh, that's gonna give us some stamina back when we're dodging through attacks. We've also got flash for a dodge. Every time we switch to the bow, we get some movement speed. Um, it's yeah, it's a very, very strong build for like moving around the map really quickly and getting quests done. Now, I would say that this build excels more at single target damage. So if you uh, just look to take down one enemy at a time, the bow is going to be really strong for that. A lot of the times it will like kill enemies before they even get close to you, especially with rapid shot doing like a lot of damage. Now, again, you know, I'm really high level. Uh, I'm level 60 and these guys are only like level 40. So it's not going to prove too much, but we can kind of give you a little bit of an example here if I don't get too wild with this one. Because again, we don't have healing this time. If we just pull a few enemies in with the bow, um, and obviously we've got the advantage that it does a pretty sizable chunk of damage when we get them in close here. Let's get this guy. Um, all right, not the biggest pull here, but if we go ahead and leech and flurry into these guys, we should find that we're able to spam it like pretty effectively here. Um, and if you imagine we had Leeching Flurry, we'd be getting like a pretty insane amount of lifesteal there as well. Still almost died, so it's obviously quite a bit riskier than the uh, Life Staff Hatchet. We don't have Defy Death and we don't have the Sacred Ground to top us up. But if you really want to punch through the enemies as fast as possible and move around the map really quickly, this is the build for you. So let's jump into Weapon Mastery and talk about what makes the build tick and where you want to put your points first. I think picking up all of the relevant abilities that we want to take, so Flurry, followed by evade, followed by flesh, just to start with the first three um, levels to give us like get us online here. You know, we have a little bit of movement speed that way and we can also start doing a bit of flurry spam. After this though, the ability that you definitely want to upgrade is flurry and we're going to max this all the way out because uh, we get the stagger on the end there um, and we also get some like cooldown reduction uh, here as well. So each hit of flurry reduces its cooldown by 7%. Very, very nice. From here on out, we're then going to go ahead and max out the evade. Now the final point, um, they did change this so it's not as valuable as it used to be, but I still think it's, it's worth taking for the other upgrades that you get here. And then at this point, we're pretty much done. And we're going to look to lock in some passives that, again, give us that movement speed and give us like a little bit more survivability. So stamina for more dodges, um, swiftness to increase our movement speed here, getting a little bit of extra damage with light edge and also some cooldown reduction with refreshing strikes. This also does uh, synergize with flurry. So maybe you do want to take this before taking some other passives. And then I think at this point, we would just like to get the ultimate eventually. Um, however, you know, at this point, we're basically maxed out with the rapier. So it doesn't matter too much. Final upgrade, uh, we're going to take on guard for the 50%. 10% extra damage while they're above 50%. And moving on to the bow, similar to the rapier, we want to be looking to take passives that increase our movement speed and also give us uh, the survivability where we can. So I think taking a uh, evade shot first, just for a little bit of a um, sort of, you know, get out of dodge is going to be pretty nice. Um, it does also lead you down to some uh, extra movement speed down here with go the distance. But the next thing that I would say we would take is evasive tactics at level two. Um, so you're going to be getting these online very quickly. And then at this point, you want to be rushing your way down to a rapid shot as quickly as you can. So I think aim true is a little bit better. So I think aim true and long range are honestly both pretty good. But considering we're going to be like opening with the bow and then switching to the rapier potentially, um, I'm going to go for aim true here to open up with a big chunk of damage. Neither of these really synergize too well with the way that we're trying to run the build. But we're going to go for finishing shot because I think 10% less damage while aiming. Just unless you're doing PvP, it doesn't really work too well. Then maxing out the rapid shot. Then we're going to jump back over to the left hand side of this tree here. Um, take evasive knockback and then max out our poison shot. So we've got all of our abilities online here. And then at this point, we're just looking to sort of finalize the build. So we're going to take a little bit more movement speed here with go the distance. Uh, we're also going to get the dodge and weave for the 10%. You could pick up archer's speed if you want. 10% haste when you swap to the bow. 
um, but it does have a 10 second cooldown. And also if we take this, I don't believe we have enough points to get our ultimate down here and 20% extra damage on a headshot and getting your arrows back. It might be nice as you're leveling up. So uh, we're gonna take some other passives here that just basically allow us to unlock the headshot ultimate here. And there we have it basically. So to get this build online, you wanna go evade shot, evasive tactics, and then work your way down to rapid shot and then move back over and work your way down to poison shot. And from there, it's just picking up passives uh, that look good to you and probably working into the uh, concussion ultimate down here. Attributes wise, what's gonna make this build tick is dexterity and constitution. You could go some intelligence for the rapier, um, like the 10% damage to backstabs and random crits, but I don't really think it's worth it. So just aiming to get yourself to 150 dexterity and about 50 constitution, I think is like the sort of initial milestones that you guys wanna go for. So again, we'd be looking to do three points into dexterity, one, two, three, and then one into constitution, and then one, two, three and then one into constitution and just sort of stick at that pace as you level up so like a three to one dex to constitution just to make sure that you don't die like too quickly and then further on looking to get your constitution to a hundred um, because you are going to need a bit more of a health pool for this build um because you don't have the healing that like life staff provides and then after 100 constitution i would just focus more on dexterity at that point i think 100 constitution for leveling is uh, more than fine one thing that we didn't mention with either of these builds is your equip load and honestly as you're leveling up you should probably just use whatever you can find i will say that if you are using life staff uh, you do generally want to be in light armor and the way that you can sort of set that up and we'll say we'll just recommend like light armor for both of these uh, builds but the way you can set that up as i mentioned is to go for a helmet uh, so a light helmet and then we're gonna go for a medium chest so if I just search for chest here we should have a, a medium chest somewhere in medium chest then we're back over to light gloves we're also gonna go ahead and take some light legs as well and also some light boots uh, the reason why we do this is because it keeps us just under that threshold of going into medium but you can see down here if I take my camera off my physical and elemental uh, 762 obviously this is quite high because uh, considering my level uh, but if I was to go just like full light um, we're gonna drop down some armor rating by a considerable margin here for no real benefit like I'm still in lights right now um, there's not like a difference between in light armor and being in like ultra light armor so yeah go ahead take a medium chest just get a little bit of extra protection there and you'll still be in that light um, load so that concludes a quick guide to two leveling builds that you can use a new world um, one obviously focusing more on healing and just sort of getting in there and whacking lots of dudes at the same time and the second one being a bit more evasive and moving around the map a lot faster there are a multitude of other leveling builds that you can use in the game. Uh, I think a lot of them using Hatchet, All Life Staff, Life Staff Void Gauntlet, Hatchet Bow, Hatchet Spear, um, even Great Sword and Great Axe. But I did want to keep this video concise to just like not overload with too much build information at the same time. If you are in a spot where you're finding that you've got gem slots in your armor, I think for the purpose of leveling and PvE, um, Onyx is going to be good, Diamonds, Malachite, and in your weapons just always try and go for Opal Gems because they synergize very nicely um, where you dodge and you just do extra damage because your stamina isn't full. As always guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you go ahead and click the like button, subscribe for more, and I'll see you guys all in the next one.